Okay. Okay, so we've gone through tasks one and through four, which is what we've been doing all along. Um, and then we just did task five, which is rearranging our sentences into the four different purposes. Now we're going to do task six, which is quid it quo. And that is Latin for what and why. So um, remember the past two weeks in our science, in foundations, we've explored God's world and how everything he has made is um, atoms and molecules, right? And we look at that through a microscope. That is no different than doing the quid it quo process. We're just doing it with the words, okay? So we're gonna look at the words under a microscope. Um, we're gonna make sure that we, thank you. Um, we understand how and why this word functions the way it does in reference to syntax, okay? So this is um, gonna be on your EEL guide, page 331. So parents, make sure you turn that page and read it at home or now if you haven't already. Um, so the reason we do quid it quo is so that we can deeply understand what and why of our language in its most simplistic form, right? Kind of like an atom is the most simplistic. Well, the most simplistic part of our language is each individual word. All right, um, again, at home, only do this for the independent clauses. Do not do this for the subordinate clauses. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna do it for the turtle brought the hippo a flower. I would say, yeah. so when we diagram, are we only diagramming the, the independent part? Yes. Um, second and third to our kids can do more but it's suggested until you're fluent in it, don't add the subordinate until you're, you're okay, right. So she knows how to, like the one, the part that we did today, if she's doing that well, then I can add. Yeah, she can just like it. knock it out without having to flip through all of the charts and yeah. like reference everything. Then it's time to do your, your next okay. and level, level up, game, game on. All right, so the way that this works, and you guys have this right here, you guys need to turn to quid it quo analytical task sheet. This is number six. And Pam, I will give this to you. All right, so the second line, this is where we're going to write one word per block, and then we will label the part of speech above it, all right? So we're only gonna do the independent clause, and if, you know what, for time, we're just gonna do the first three words, okay? Um, the turtle brought. So go ahead and add that to each block on the second row. Yeah, so V. Put your feet down, put your head Turtle. Down. Thank you. Okay. I have what you did. All right, so now we're gonna label it. So this is parsing, right? We're gonna identify the parts of speech. Um, we're gonna break it apart and analyze it. So the, what is the, guys? Particle adjective. Thank you. Um, what is turtle? Subject. Thank you. And remember, we're just doing three. Uh, what is brought? Thank you. Okay. And we don't have the whole for the context, but this is transitive. Okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to just do one word at a time. You're going to look at it in the microscope. Okay. So adjective. So you're going to look on the side and you're going to find your adjective box and make sure parents that you're helping your kiddos follow along because it's a lot of information. And I found this sheet that I passed out to you guys, instead of having to flip back and forth between your charts and quid it quo, all the questions that you need are right on here so you can literally just highlight or circle. I felt like this was a much more efficient way. Um, so if you wanna use this instead, and just highlight and circle, it's, it's easier in my opinion. Okay, 
Um, all right, so back to that. Sorry. All right, so you would have to turn to your chart J, and you'd have to ask yourself, what type of adjective is the adjective the? So is it going to be descriptive, possessive, uh, sorry, positive, or comparative? Sorry, descriptive, possessive, and limiting. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, there we go. Oh, so it's a limiting adjective because it's an article. Perfect. Yes. Okay. It's an article adjective which limits. It specifies whether it's a or the, right? Or so you're going to write limiting in the next box. Oh wait, you don't put it next to it. So um, so we're going to work in columns. Okay. okay. Yep. I this thing. This. It's confusing, Whoa. no doubt. Yes. Okay. So I don't even remember how we did it, but I remember feeling like it, it wasn't lined up the right way. So like it was better. Like this one better. Okay. And then we and then we just go down this. Okay. So I. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. Limiting. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Right there. Wait. You just write limiting. Okay. Or you couldn't L. Whatever. Limiting, you just have to specify. Oh, because we already said that it's an adjective. So, you can so now, it next question. Right yep. Exactly. Wait, can, I, can I ask you one more question? Of course. Okay, so does, is she writing limiting right under it, or should she go down to this adjective area? No, so this is just your reference. This is like the key. Okay, that's what I kept thinking. Yeah. Like everything should be lined up. So it's just right under the word. It's not going to be sitting lined up. Or if you wanted to highlight out of the go. So like if you put the word here, mm -hmm. you would jump on the adjective, oh, okay. and you would just okay. So I would put this to my page protector, and then sh 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 and then you know, just here. Yes. I know. Okay. All right. Um, let me find my spot again. Hang on, guys, real quick. Sorry. No, that's great. Okay. So it is limiting because it tells us which turtle. Okay. So then we write L in the column, and now you go to your quidditch quote. We decided that the was limiting. Da, 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 da. Now in the next box, we're going to put how, what type of limiting? Because there's different options for limiting. This is an article adjective, so we're going to write a, a. Okay, um, other examples would be pronouns are limiting, um, numbers or ordinals. That is also limiting, but in this case, it's an article adjective. All right, and now let's look at the next word, turtle. And the reason we're moving on is because we've we've answered answered those questions. So turtle. What part of speech is turtle? Turtle's a noun. We've answered that. So now let's look at our microscope. Let's find out. What attributes we need to determine, Gavin, or analyze the word of noun? So, on the left side of your sheet, there's a box, which is like your key, and that's going to give you the questions you need to ask. There we go. So here, so this is going to be the, turtle's going to be in this the first column, and then the box is going to be in that column. Person. All right, so now we're going to be doing nouns, so we're going to utilize that right. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Need to do proper. All right. So, is turtle proper or common? Common. It is common. A prop. So, you are a human. Capitalized. Human is a well, common. Well, I, I wasn't sure if turtle was his name. Oh, if it was capitalized, yeah. then, then we could assume okay. that it's his name, right? Because okay. of um, capitalization rules. Yeah, right. I was just remembering the fable that we did last week or the so. The turtle and the hammer? Mice. No, it was, well, we were doing something different, but yeah, it, uh, like mice was capitalized, and I thought about that. So I was like, oh, because to me it didn't seem like they were naming it. Mice, mice but it was capitalized, so I would have to assume. That's a proper noun, right? The beginning of a sentence. Okay, so what's the first they question do. that we have to ask ourselves, guys? <laughs> Let's look at our chart, okay? Um, okay. Common or proper? So, common is like humans. Proper would be 
Amy or Gavin. All right, so we're going to put common. It's not specific. All right, is it singular or plural? That's the next question in our microscopic. Singular. It's one. It's not plural, right? Okay, plural would be more than one. Concrete or abstract? It's been a few weeks since we've done this. I do you want to do gender first? I'm just calling in the order that I actually have on my notes. Oh, gotcha. Sorry, it might be out of order off of that check sheet, but it doesn't matter the order. Okay. The only time that that order might get mixed up, and I haven't checked, is like your verb subject oh, okay. agreement. Okay. Um, we can get that's yeah. Okay. That's too, that's too much for today. Okay. All right. Um, so concrete okay, so or abstract? Concrete. So concrete. Yeah. Go ahead. Concrete. Concrete. Yes. It can be experienced with your senses, right? Abstract. You wouldn't be able to touch, feel. Okay. So concrete. Next, collective or compound? So compound would be ice cream, hot dog, backpack, or is this collective? It is actually neither. I was gonna say yep. secret, MCC. Yeah. <laughs> neither, okay. So do we get how this chart works? I don't expect you to fully understand. That's going to take practice at home. But if we can understand how these columns are for each individual word, the rows correspond to your left side, your, um, what do you call this? Your key, basically, right? But that's all it is, is a key where I thought I was having to plug things in. Nope, no plugging in, so just the key. Okay. And you use your charts to help you gather this information. Now, what I passed out to you, I gave you a plain one, I have a colored one. On the left side, parents, it's gonna tell you what chart, what chart do you need to utilize. It's gonna tell you what page to utilize. Super helpful um, for me. Wait, okay. how did you get the colored one though, sorry. I was just being cheap and didn't print it for you guys because of color ink. No, but I, know, I can but email it to you. Okay. I yeah. just didn't know if you made it or if you just had it. It was on CC Connected. It was oh, on, okay. yeah. Okay. Do you guys have any questions about quid quo, what and why, yeah. microscopic look at our syntax words? No questions? We're going to try to practice one at home. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we need to break. We're done? Oh, sorry. We're we not done. No, we're not done. The math thing. Yeah. So that I can Wait, you got the math. We didn't do the keyword outline. No one told their keyword outline. Can we hold on to No, no, no. Stop. Stop. So I think that the math feels like a break. So maybe just do your math and then keep going since they did. Or they already took their little snack break. Okay. Can we do multiplication squares? All right. So one verbs, you would do the same exactly. thing, but you just utilize the verbs, Follow right? The verb. Okay. So real quick, I'm going to give you a crash course so you understand really quickly, okay? Um, just because of time. So first person, second person, and third person verbs. So first person is going to be the person who is speaking. So first person is I. Okay, second person is going to be the person I'm talking to, you. I, first person, you, second. Third person is who we're talking about. So I am talking to you about the turtle, turtle's third person. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, crash course on adjective uh, voice. So active versus passive. This has to do with who is receiving versus giving the verb, the action. Um, so active is going to be the verb is. So I am doing the verb. Okay, versus passive, I'm receiving the verb. And here, this another one, a cheesy one. I'm sorry, think of football, right? If I was to throw you a football, you would receive the pass. That's how I remember. So you receive the pass um, for, where, where am I? For passive. Okay. Um, so this is, but this is active. 
So this is for verbs. Mm -hmm. Verbs, yeah. So it's a, but, um, for the voice. So we either have active voice or passive voice. Oh. And active voice is when the, um, the subject noun is either doing or receiving the action. So this would be active. Um, the turtle brought. Yes, because the turtle is doing the bringing. Yes, exactly. Okay, and then crash course real quick on um, time, past, present, future. We all know that, right? Present is now, past, future. Okay, then we're not gonna do that for time. Um, let's go do math. Um, we have two options.